We have come to the, uh, to the live board that we have in our, uh, in our training center. That way we can actually get a bit more close up and more detail of the hydraulic and electrical uh, 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 system of the M6 Avalanche and how to troubleshoot basic uh, uh, failures or, or um, uh, inspections. Now, again, in order to, for the, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, control console to uh, initialize, all we have to do is turn the key of the chassis on. Once the key of the chassis is on, the console will initialize. Once the console initializes, we'll see that we have blue lights on all four switch banks. That tells us that the controller and the, uh, and the console communicate. Now, the other thing, of course, that it's a good indication of the controller being in healthy shape. Uh, on either side of the controller, there is a blue flashing light flashing at two hertz on this side and another one on this side. That tells us that the controller is actually communicating and everything is in good shape. Now, it is, of course, a possibility to where instead of having a uh, blue light flashing, we may have green. Green lights means that uh, the controller has probably lost the program or the software uh, it has a, a glitch. In that situation, of course, the controller will have to be flushed and reprogrammed. The end user at that point it can send the controller and the monitor into the factory and we can actually flush the, the controller and reprogram it and send it back to the end user. Now, it is a possibility at some point or time, of course, to where the controller uh, flashing blue lights will not blue anymore, but it will be red. Red is pretty much fatal. There's nothing we can do to revive the controller at that point. Now, from here, you can actually do most of the troubleshooting when it comes to the electrical system for the M6 Avalanche. And the reason is because all this communication. As I said, the, you have two communication lines, the CAN open, which is this one, and the J1939 right here. Those two communication lines also exist inside the console. So in order to make sure that we have good communication between the console and the controller here, all we have to do is take the resistor out of the, of the communication line, ohm the two ends to make sure we've got 120 ohms. Now, if we have 120 ohms here, we should have 120 ohms inside the console on the same communication line. And here are the two communication lines inside the console. So that was the can open. We come here, the can open here as well. We're going to take that resistor out. We ohm the two ends and we should have 120 ohms as well. And of course the same thing will happen to the J1939 as well. We'll ohm it here, 120 ohms. We'll plug it back up. We ohm it here, 120 ohms. That will tell us right away that the communication line between the controller and the console is in good health. Now again, if we do not have 120 ohms, therefore there's going to be a break in communication, communication at some point between the controller and the console in those, either one of those communication lines. Now the next thing that we need to talk about is the MVEC, the Multiplex Vehicle Electrical Center. The MVEC, it has eight re relays and it has the 16 fuses that they are uh, controlling different functions of the unit. Now, 
here the, uh, the F3 and F5 are the two fuses that control the, the fans for the hydraulic cooler. There are 30 amp fuses. The F7, of course, is a 30 amp fuse, and that controls the water pump for the water system on the, on, of the unit. Now, the most important, of course, fuse in all this box is F9, which is a 5 amp fuse. That fuse powers up the controller itself. That fuse always needs to be 5 amps. Does not need to be 7, does not need to be 10. 5 amps is the fuse that needs to go back in there. From here, of course, as I said, we are going to do some troubleshooting to find out different problems of the unit. Now, what we have to do here, all you have to have is the key on on the chassis and everything is actually powering up. The console key, when you do troubleshooting, needs to be in the off position, which means that you should be able to take the key off of the console. At this point, we can actually do some troubleshooting. Now, in order to do troubleshooting, what we have to do is we'll go here and push maintenance. Immediately, the system is going to give you, uh, is going to ask you for a code. The code is five twos all the way across, okay? So, to enter that, what we do is we push enter. The light is actually start flashing. We'll go with the arrow, one, two, enter again. Go to the next one, enter, one, two, enter. Go to the next one, enter. One, two, enter. Go to the next one, enter. One, two, enter. Go to the next one, enter. One, two, enter. And we are into the maintenance screen. So what we have here, as you can see, we are on access level two. The uh, service access level three is for the, is for the dealers. And of course, access level four is for engineering uh, team. After you get into the service access level two, the first item that is highlighted is can switches. So we're gonna go in and press enter, and all of a sudden you have the four switch banks that represent these switch banks right here. The picture of the screen represents the four switch banks on the, on the, on the face of the console. Now here we can actually troubleshoot to make sure that the switches themselves, there are, they are good to go. So all you have to do is go up and down with a switch and you can see the green light on both sides. That means the switch is good. And you can do that with every switch on the console. If you see that there is a switch that is not actually lighting up, that means the switch is bad. Now, the next part will be I, uh, the IFM inputs. We'll go down to the IFM inputs and we push OK. So what we see here is a series of green lights and red lights. The green lights represent functions or actually switches or sensors that actually activate. We see a series of green and red lights. The green lights represent functions or actually switch, switches or sensors that act, they are already activated. Okay, now please do pay attention to the green lights as they will become red when the, sw the sensor is actually deactivated. So we pay attention here where it says conveyor out. That means that the conveyor is inside the hopper, which means that we are good to operate. Now, this tells us that the conveyor is not in the hopper, so therefore we cannot operate. Now we can. This one here, it says that the, right now it tells us that the hopper is in the up position, so therefore it needs to come all the way down to turn it to green. Based on the inputs, of course, that is going to show you which functions or sensors are actually activated and which ones that are not.
Now, at the same time, of course, on the side over here, we have the analog inputs, which means that it, the hydraulic oil temperature, the auxiliary engine, if there is one, what the oil pressure and the temperature is, water level, and of course, the air pressure on the, on the gutter brooms, or all the brooms. Going back, we're going down to outputs. These are all the outputs that you can actually have on the M6 Avalanche. These are different functions that can be triggered from here. So what that tells us, uh, we go here to, uh, we pick a function. The main, the main broom motor, okay? And we activate that. When we activate it, you see a green light. At the same time, we see a green light, we see a light on the hydraulic valve for the main broom motor. What that tells us, that we send a command from here to the controller, and the controller powers up the valve on the manifold. And that's how everything works. And you can do that with every one of those outputs. Timer set points is the next item that is on the, on the list here. The timer set points have nothing to do with operation. It's just delays between the operation of the broom or the elevator or the main broom or anything like that. So these are already preset by the factory and they need to be left alone. Next item is going to be up the software update. Usually the software updates are done by the dealer where we actually send a code to the dealer and the dealer actually does the software updates as needed at some point or time. Going further down, we got the auxiliary flow set points. Now the auxiliary flow set points are the what we can do, we can control how much that valve is actually opening up to where it will allow more flow through the valve to make, uh, make the, uh, the system faster or actually the function faster or slower. So we can go here at any time and all we have to do is uh, hopper lift up or hopper lift down. We go with hopper lift down. It is at 55%. It is a possibility from time to time to where the hopper will come down shaking. That means that the flow is not enough through the, through the valve and the, uh, uh, through the system in, to allow the hopper to come down smoothly. So what we can do is we can actually select enter. When that flashes, we can go up 5%, enter that and actually check it to make sure that actually smoothens out. And you can go up or down either way as needed. The next one, of course, is sweeper options. These represent options that they are available for the M6 Avalanche. If those options are not available or they're not ordered with the unit when it leaves the factory, it can be added later. So the factory will send out the hardware to be put on and a code to go in and turn the function on from the controller. Now, one very, very important thing is every, every sweeper, when he leaves out of here, the controller and the monitor, they're programmed together. The program and the software version is located right here. It is a very good idea to make sure when you have the sweeper into your possession, to make sure you write those, that software into a somewhere and save it, just in case that you have a, uh, a monitor that goes blank. That way we already have the software that the sweeper was uh, programmed with. This is, this is a basic troubleshooting that we can uh, that you can have with the electrical system on the M6 Avalanche. Now again of course if you have to have more details you can go to the video and watch it to make sure that you understand everything or 
If you need more details about the schematics, those are located in the manual. Now there is one thing that actually is very, very important when it comes to the, when it comes to the, um, uh, the control box. From time to time, there, the, uh, depending on where the sweeper is located at, it is a possibility to where moisture can get into those plugs. If there is moisture get to the plugs, eventually it can, they can short out. It is a good idea to keep some dielectric grease on either one of those plugs to keep the moisture away from the, from the pins. We moved away from the, uh, from the truck itself to the, to the uh, uh, live board that we have in the training center so we can actually pinpoint the hydraulic valves and some of the hydraulic uh, functions that they are coming along with the, uh, with the M6 Avalanche. So what we have here is the four, the four motor valves for the, uh, for the M6 Avalanche. We have the main broom here. We got the elevator here and the elevator uh, reverse here. Now, uh, if you in doubt, of course, you can actually see on the manifold everything is engraved so you cannot, uh, you cannot misrepresent where those valves are actually being put on. Okay, now this is the elevator reverse. Now we have two pressure switches, one here and one here. Those two pressure switches, this one represents the, the, uh, the uh, elevator, this one represents the main broom. Now what those pressure switches do, if for some reason the uh, elevator sees a jam, this uh, pressure switch is going to get triggered because it's going to see the spike on the pressure and it is going to tell you on, this, on the monitor that the conveyor is actually jammed. The same thing with the main broom. Those pressure switches are doing the same thing. It is of course possibility to where that pressure switch may go bad. So therefore it's going to show you that the conveyor or the main broom is actually continuously jammed. At that point of course that will be the problem. Now these valves right here, we call them, we call these stack valves. The stack valves over here, of course, are represent hydraulic functions or actually hydraulic cylinders. Okay. Now this is the left gutter broom hydraulic cylinder. Now, this is a stack valve. One side of the valve is actually uh, pushes, the other one pulls. So therefore, the hydraulic cylinder will either extend or retract, okay? So now, the thing that you're gonna have to be careful about is that the, the stem on this valve is very long. If it's bent just slightly, this valve is not gonna work well, okay? Now, the other thing, of course, is, any time that you have to put this together, do not forget to put the washer right in between. Now, any time that you put the jam nut on the outside, you do not need to tighten up that very hard. All you need to do is snug it. Okay? Now, the red button right here on these valves is actually what we call the manual override. So, pulling or pushing the manual override, what it's going to do is going to differentiate what kind of problem you got with that valve. If pushing or pulling the, the, the manual override actually makes the function operate, that means that you have an electrical issue. If pulling or pushing this, the function is not working, then the problem is your hydraulic valve. Now, another very, very important part that I need to explain to everybody is that it is a possibility from time to time to where the pressure on the main hydraulic pump, which it can be behind the, behind the auxiliary engine or behind the transmission of the chassis. It is possible that the hydraulic pump will not produce pressure. That means the high pressure. Now, right here, there is a plug number 22. That will be the plug. If you take this plug out, right underneath there, there is a orifice. 
if, if the pump will not pressurize, that orifice may be plugged up. You need to take the orifice out and clean it up and put it back in there, and that should take care of the problem. Now, on the right side manifolds, they, you still have the manual override on the cylinder valves over here. However, these two valves here, they represent the up and down of the scissor lift, okay? The up and down of the scissor lift, of course, there are single valves. Now, in the middle there, there is a little pin that you can push to override, to manually override the valve. It's not the same as this, it's just a small pin that it's on the center of the valve to where you can actually manually uh, override it. Now, one more thing that I want to uh, point here is that you can see on the right side manifolds, there are relief valves. One here, one there, and one more here. Now those relief valves, they're supposed to be 200, 200 pounds higher than what the main relief is on the pump. So when you set your main hydraulic pump at 3,000 or 3,100 PSI, those manifold relief valves that should be set at least 32 or 3,300 PSI. This is actually your, this is, this is actually the uh, uh, pneumatic assembly, okay? So left GEO, right GEO, left gutter broom, right gutter broom, left main broom, right main broom. Now, these plugs right here, they represent what we call the filter cables, okay? The filter cable, there is the filter right in between the plug that goes into the, into the harness and the plug that goes into the regulator, okay? It is a possibility the regulator is actually going to give some crazy numbers. The regulator is always supposed to have the same number as you read into the, into the monitor inside the, inside the cab, plus or minus two pounds, okay? Now, if the regulator starts having some crazy numbers like triple zero or 6,500 or things like that, that means that the filter is probably bad. Now, this is actually a little older filter cable. However, all the new sweepers, they have an orange plug here and the filter cable and the filter is actually can be replaced all by itself. All it has to do is get unplugged and put a new filter in there and you should be in good shape, okay? Now, right up here, of course, they are the three sandwich valves. As I said, this is the airbags, deflate and inflate. The middle one, it is the cam lock on the, on the main broom cylinders. And the one all the way to the back, as you can see, it's got two, it's got two plugs those represent the, the extension and retraction of the lift lift air cylinders on the elevator. Also on the board and of course on the truck itself, on the sweeper itself, we have five proximity switches. One, two, three, four, five. These proximity switches are the switches that communicate with each other and let the operator know that the sweeper is in, um, it, it can be going on operation. Now, as you can see, those proximity switches, they have a yellow and a green light, which means that when they have a green, green and a yellow light, means that those switches are activated, okay? The green light means it's got power. The yellow light means that it's activated. So if for some reason the conveyor is actually outside of the hopper, you will only have a green light. If for some reason this switch is actually bad and only has a green light and the conveyor is in, that means that that switch has to be replaced. Or if you do not have a green light, that means it's not getting power, so it has to be investigated where the power was broke. And even though those switches, they look alike, all five of them, they're not the same, okay? We have three proximity switches that are 20 millimeters. The other two, that they're 40 millimeters, 
they can actually activate and read about an inch away. That is the difference between those. This is a basic troubleshooting on the M6 Avalanche hydraulics and electrical. Please do review those videos and see to make sure that you understand uh, the basics. And of course, we do have a monthly training sessions here in Huntsville, Alabama, that we would love to have the people to come in and get a little bit more educated on more details on the, on the technical and troubleshooting on the M6 Avalanche.